Good day. Today I'm doing a little bit more on uh, this or the, the successor to this one. Uh, several people made comments about what they would have done and so in the first bit of the video I'm going to be addressing some of the, the solutions that other people have offered up. None of them are necessarily bad but they just don't do all that I want it to do. Uh, and then I'm just going to be making up a few bits and pieces for the base here. Uh, nothing terribly exciting but uh, necessary bits and I've, I've changed the approach so that might be interesting to see as well. In my previous video I may not have explained terribly well what I'm trying to do here. Currently I use this to centre up stock in a four jaw and as you can see you know when I first put something in uh, this one's not too bad but I've got around about 30 thou worth of, of eccentricity there. Uh, and usually when I'm doing this, I wind the, the dial round to the one so I've got enough movement that I can, I can see that. What I'm after is something that I can use to get in here because I may have something where I've turned up that shaft and I want everything here to be concentric with it. And so I need something that will get in there. And as you can see from this, the dial runs into the face. Now, sometimes you've got enough room that you can space that out and that's all, all fine, but sometimes um, this bit is so short that uh, you just haven't got room to do that. So there's that. Um, there's also, you know, if I wanted to make this eccentric to, to this part, okay, I need to be able to kick that over a, a certain amount. And the other one which was, which was inspired by John was there are times when you want things to be concentric to a bore and so I'd really like to be able to get in there with something so I can true this up with respect to the bore rather than perhaps the shaft or, or whatever the story is. I mean this could be a bit of um, stuff I've turned down just to hold on to so I can then uh, do something here and then part that off. I, I, I don't know. So a couple of suggestions that were made. Firstly uh, the, the, the easy one was to put an extension onto one of these things. Yes that would work for doing you know that one and for doing that one in there but I've still got to come up with a setup for doing the the inside here so you know that's that's not a bad one a uh, couple of people have suggested using a uh, an, an indicator with a long stem on it uh, this one's 30 millimeters now on my lathe I prefer to keep things imperial just because the lathe's graduated in imperial units but you know sometimes that uh, that doesn't happen so that would certainly get into there and be able to let me you know put this eccentric but once again getting in here is difficult um, I guess you could you know put it mount on a skew like that but that to me defeats the purpose of having a quick change tool post I, I, I want to be able to come along put that on there da, 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 and take it off right I don't want to have to muck around with with extra setups I do have one of these this is a uh, 196 Starrett uh, rear plunger indicator uh, and I use this for tramming up my mill but I could use that to indicate on the inside uh, and that would that would do the job but uh, I'd have I'd have to devise some way of, of holding that which isn't too difficult I guess but when it comes down to here uh, it gets a little bit trickier again because I'd have to be up here or something like that well I couldn't do it that way I'd have to do it this way so I was in in compression I could also use a DTI uh, and that would be all right for uh, had to be that way I guess for uh, indicating the bore but once again getting it down that gap and trying to to not run into it uh, would be tricky the other thing is this has got a travel of 0.8 of a millimetre. Now when I first put things into the chuck, I'm lucky to be within 0.8 of a millimetre of, of um, concentric. Uh, I'm more likely to be, you know, a millimetre or two. And so most of the time I don't think this would, this would work for me. Uh, the other thing is too, and when trying to set up an eccentric, uh, this wouldn't have the, the travel for that either. So how will this device or its, um, its descendant help? Well. I can get in quite easily there and I can also get in to centre up on, on this bit. I've got uh, 0.4 of an inch so around about 10 millimetres worth of travel 
so I can certainly uh, do an eccentric any more than that then I, yes I do need to get something else in but I, I don't think I've ever seen an eccentric with uh, more than about 10 millimeters for the inside measurement I could I could cant it over but then I'd need a, a weird mount for that so what I'm going to do is make up a little hook which will um, basically pull this rod out and because of the the, the second or the, the, the paddle here with the second side and I'll mount a dial there and then when this is pulled that paddle will push against that dial so that's that's how I'm going to do that one thing about these indicators and in fact a lot of equipment is it's designed for a specific set of circumstances in the case of an indicator the forces are all meant to be axial okay having a sideways force on it is not going to be good for it I'll show you the back of the indicator in a moment and so there was a suggestion made and I'm not quite sure whether it was a, a suggestion that someone else made or whether it was just someone thinking about a suggestion that some, someone had made and interpreted but the, the suggestion was oh, I'll put a bit of angle on here so I guess take that out and, and, and put a hole there screw it on and you can get in that way uh, yes you can except that when that's pushing up against the work that's doing that right and so what you're doing is you're, you're applying a twisting force onto the the stem of the indicator does that matter maybe maybe not um, but I don't particularly want to wear my indicators out to find out that actually no I shouldn't have been doing that and I'm sure if you spoke to uh, you know Mitch Toya or Starrett or whoever makes your indicators and asked them can I put sideways force on these things they'd say ah no not really I do have a clock in ODs a lot of the time when I'm when I'm you know doing this sort of thing so I don't particularly want to have it so that my standard setup is one that's going to um, uh, you know destroy my indicators I want to show you this too this is the inside of a, of a dial indicator and you can see there's a small gear there and there's a rack on the on the back of the the uh, the plunger and so when you push the plunger the rack turns the gear there's a gear train there and that that gives the indication now the only thing stopping this twisting is this shaft here uh, and that's going into uh, to, to get this to line up properly that's going into a slot just there so basically the only thing if I eccentrically load this the only thing that stops this going off the gear and all that sort of thing is this rod um, I also run the risk if I'm if I'm not in the direct axis here of wearing bushings so you know that's something that I'm not all that keen to do about make up a few parts and uh, I just thought I'd, I'd, I'd mention this because sometimes you don't think about these things and you make things a lot harder for yourself this particular part has got two cutouts here and it's also got a, a range of holes so ignoring that for the moment what I'm going to do is, is set that up in the in the mill and drill those holes before I, I do the rest of the uh, the milling out because that way at least I've got something to, to grab onto here this one up here uh, same sort of thing it's got a cut out there with some holes there so I'll put those holes in and then I'll, I'll, I'll take out this piece here uh, and that just gives me a little bit more to, to grab onto there are some holes on the end but that's okay um, that's that's a that's a pretty straightforward way of, of grabbing that over on this side of the page I've got this wonderfully complex bracket that I've uh, dreamt up um, it started off as a, as a lozenge shape uh, sorry the material started off as a lozenge shape uh, and I've, I've you know basically got that outline there I now need to put in some um, you know relief and all that sort of thing on the back there there's a um, well it's, it's really just for the, uh, the, the, the shoulder screw to, to have something to, to bite into so it's not, it's not critical uh, but what I'm going to do is leave that bit till last because that way I can at least get every other detail on there and have something flat that I can sit on uh, without getting too, uh, too confused um, similarly with the, um, the, the, the 30 degree uh, chamfer there you know I want a, a, a pair of flat surfaces that I can grab onto uh, before I take that off so just uh, the value of, of, of thinking ahead a little bit there um, I dare say I'll come a cropper sooner or later but at the moment uh, 
putting those details in before I get too far down the track is probably a good idea. I'm even debating whether I should put in these two holes uh, from here while I've got something to hang on to there rather than take this bit out and then try and, and put them in there. Here are the first three pieces of the revised um, whatever we're going to call that jigger. I unfortunately I ran out of daylight today and so I didn't get as far as I'd like to, to get but the basic shape is this. I'm going to put that on there like so and then put bushes in there. Um, while I haven't got a reamer long enough I did realize that the reamer I do have provided that's held up in a in a in a you know rigidly I can ream this top hole and then I can come down and ream this bottom hole and they'll be roughly in line. So that's all good. This bit which is about half made will bolt on to there and that'll hold the top indicator plus provide the pivot point for the, the, the paddle. So that'll sit in there like that uh, and this one is the pivot for, uh, sorry, the, the holder for the bottom uh, indicator. So that'll have a hole drilled in it. Um, they need to be at, at an angle and so I'm going to have to do those uh, at another time. One tip for you, I've got a, a tapped hole there and a tapped hole there. They're very close. Now when doing this sort of thing, particularly in soft materials like plastic, sometimes it helps to put a you know, drill and tap this one, put a, put a screw in there and then drill and tap that one. And what that does is it means that when you go and, particularly with the tapping, uh, it's not going to try and push material over into that uh, prior tapped hole because if it does that you might find you, you can't get one or both screws down there. Now if you're tapping very close to the edge, the same sort of thing can happen is that when you're tapping it can bulge material out. Uh, and the problem with that of course is if you then go push that material in the screw doesn't want to go in if you leave it bulged out uh, apart from looking a little bit odd it may mean that a, a close fitting part there won't fit so what a, a good idea for that is is just get a bit of material uh, and I'm just using this because it's here clamp that on there and what that'll mean is that material can't push that way and so you can um, uh, drill and tap that one take that material off and that should be stay flush Anyway, as I said, running out of daylight, so thanks for watching and uh, see you for the next one.